Hey, folks. Hello. Hey. Uh, did this thing freeze on me? The great Radu. What time is it for you? Uh, for me, it's 10.30. That's not too bad. Oh, let me get rid of that background. It's too old. Here we go. Feeling very jungly today. So I see the uh, tough scenarios that Marina added. There was, it seems like there was some leftover conversation from last week that Justin Capos um, wanted to bring up. There's something or uh, some conversation with Sam that uh, he was talking about. Oh, somebody was nice enough to add me, thank you. I mention his name and he shows up. Awesome. Hey, Justin. Hello. Sorry for the momentary delay. I had a uh, fun time solving things to prove I am human. <laughs> um, so I don't know what we have for an agenda. Sorry for being a few minutes late, but um, we've gone and produced a bunch of the scenarios, information, and other things, which are, I guess people probably saw because we posted it in the notary channel. Um, so I think at least one avenue of discussion here, we also added a few scenarios that I think we're lacking from the document that are not um, necessarily the most important scenarios to um th they're useful scenarios to have because i think that the next level of questions will be well what about these things but they're not um i can understand why they weren't in the original document uh because they're more of the less common cases like setting up um setting things up when they're not already set up um, they were actually part of the key management stuff. Uh, so they're great to have. We were, I think we were tracking those separately as key management scenarios. So that's the way I interpreted the ones that you guys added, which are great. I agree. Um, but there was supposed to be a key management working group that was going to focus on those. Yeah. I mean, there are things that have to be handled. They have to be somewhere. We put them somewhere. And I don't think I mean, I think the actual steps you do are very slightly different, but I don't necessarily think the number of steps or the, um, like the the purpose of the step is fundamentally different across different solutions. I think it's just a matter of maybe you, you know, you put your signature here versus there, or you, um, like, you know, you click a button on a UI instead of uploading something that has your signature or something like that. Um, we yeah, there's, there's been a bunch of things like the offline key management stuff too that's come up. So um, if you guys want to do a, a, another PR for the key management scenarios, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be a good idea to get those in the official repo. Um, and you can restart them from, <laughs> from one instead yeah. of worrying about double digits. We can just say these are the key management scenarios uh, and get those there. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So aside from those ones, though, um, I, if it's okay, I'd like to have a quick discussion about the um, this this idea of targets delegation, because I think that in whatever um, solution we come up with, um, this will be an issue that we'll want to figure out is um, um, kind of who's in charge of delegating control to who. Like when a developer, um, you know, joins a product or is in charge of uploading something, how does the registry know that this developer is trusted? 
um, for this project? And then, you know, if an organization has a lot of developers, um, how can they manage that internally so that the, the registry doesn't have to be updated, you know, every time someone joins a team? So is that something that people would be interested in discussing or? Yeah, we. I, I think I, I, I'd want to uh, uh, look more into that. Um, part of what we were uh, trying to kind of cover is that that access delegation versus key delegation is something we want to dive more into. Um, is this just saying that, you know, uh, we're going to provide a PKI, like we're going to provide integrations with the PKI and how you manage that PKI is entirely up to you uh, versus does the registry actually need to track something um, to kind of enable this track, uh, this delegation of access. Um, so there's a difference between delegating um, access to keys versus generating keys that kind of are delegated to sort of like a root. And I think we mm -hmm. want to dive into that a little bit more to understand the trade-offs between those two approaches. Okay, yeah. I put a note in the doc and maybe it's just me because I don't drill into the details of uh, key management, but I, I, I was wondering if there's something written up because there's the targets and delegations, there are, there's general terms and I'm not sure if those apply here. So it'd be really good just to clarify if you have some docs or pointers to something. Yeah, I can, I can definitely find um, some documentation on it. The basic idea is that the, um, like targets is kind of a, a name for anything that's in charge of signing images. And it, instead of actually signing it an image or artifact or whatever, they might say, okay, so I have responsibility for this image, but I'm gonna pass that off to this developer who actually wrote the project and is responsible for it. And so, um, so those are all those, those targets files delegating that responsibility. But then the, at the end of the day, it's that last developer who signs the file and says, okay, yeah, you know, we wrote this code, this is what it looks like, and then uploads it um, back to the registry. Um, basically, the idea is that that way, if you have a complicated organizational structure, um, that doesn't have to be visible to the registry. The registry can just say, you know, I delegate to this organization, and then that organization can then decide who's actually trusted to, to sign individual artifacts. Um, you know, organization or team or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, uh, Marina's completely right. Um, I just want to add one very minor additional point, which is that it also makes it so there's really never, ever a need to share keys, which is something that we say, we see people operationally do a fair amount. And so it, it just, it gets rid of that, which causes you to have just so much better operational security. So the idea there isn't one master key that lots of people having like the build system ha multiple build servers have it some individuals have it and somebody's laptop gets compromised then all things are off you're saying that we would be able to know that that laptop's version delegated version of the key was the thing that was compromised and you can just revoke that one yeah exactly it removes that single point of failure yeah, yeah. sounds great yeah if we can have some kind of pointer to it like i said maybe it's just me but I think there's a bunch of people like me that are not willing to say anything <laughs> that are kind of wondering what exactly means by all this. And it sounds very official and nobody wants to ask the stupid question, uh, but so I yeah. will. Yeah, I'm sure we have something written. I'll make sure I'll go find it. And, yeah. Great. We, we made progress, but we didn't quite get to a shareable state with the overhead information, but it doesn't look um, particularly high. So we'll share actual numbers rather than kind of ambushing everybody in this meeting and presenting some numbers, we'll um, check things again because we put the scenarios uh, together this week. And so we want to, you know, we don't want to flood you with too much. And we also want to be sure we're really checking things so that everything's accurate. Yeah, the scenarios certainly are a, a good priority to focus on because I think some questions came out there because um, uh, there's a couple of people also piled on there. Uh, the On the scalability, it's not one of the things that I'm also, I keep on seeing and I'm concerned and questioning is the, the role-based access control concerns um, that two repos don't have the same permission sets and people that have access to those repos don't. So having a single, um, 
uh, metadata repo is the concern as opposed to the metadata being stored with the artifact. Uh, and that is part of what the original notary project was that we were trying to get away from also having external storage. I think we, I think I understand that scenario, but I'm not certain I do. Um, is this one of the scenarios in the scenarios document? I, you know, it's probably a good point. Uh, I, there's, I did not call it out because there's just an assumption around permissions of a registry that like any um, storage solution that has multiple storage buckets that could have different permissions. Um, but it's a good point. I don't know if I'd call yeah, it. It's, pro it's, it's, probably worth, as much. it's probably worth calling these things out explicitly just for completeness. I, it's probably more a constraint, uh, maybe call it out, because I don't know if it's really a scenario. It's the, because there's a couple yeah. of constraints we've had, like okay. we must ensure that we leverage each cloud provider's key management solution. We shouldn't come up with a new key management solution. Like we, and then we maybe we use HashiCorps for the open source implementation. Uh, we assume each, cloud, each registry cloud being part of them, um, have its own permission uh, security model uh, that they put in. And one of these things is that one of the constraints are uh, different registries have different permission models. And even within a registry, there's different permission models. Um, I think ACR is one of the few that we're kind of late. We've assumed each registry was the permission boundary, but we're now adding, we've already added and we'll be adding more uh, repo bound permissions. And I, I'm happy to explain it now, or we can just write it up, but just think of it as multiple repos are in, actually Docker Hub is like this also, right? It's like there's, Justin and I both have accounts on Docker Hub. I obviously don't have access to his uh, private images and he doesn't have access to mine. We can both make stuff public, um, but those are, public is not actually a normal scenario in private registries. Um, in fact, it's the anti-pattern of a private registry. So two teams, that have a collection of images uh, each in a single registry um, is the permission boundary problem. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we, we believe that we cover this well, but the act of like having a clearly written scenario and us clearly write how we cover it will make that, will make any um, talking past each other very clear. Okay, let me add a note here to the One of the things that you know you you learn as soon as you teach anything is that the um, it, if you don't understand something you you figure it out very quickly as you teach it and everyone else does too so the exposition should be helpful. And I'll take the action for this. So did you want to go through the, how did you want to do this? Did you want to go through that doc that you guys had? Did you want to, um, yeah, we, we, I saw it late last night and didn't get a chance to start editing, uh, putting comments in, reading it, putting comments in until this morning. I saw a bunch of other people did as well. Did you want to, again, being we have 15 minutes left because we shifted to half an hour of reviews as opposed to or half an hour summaries as opposed to discussions. Um, how do you want to use your time? Can we actually have a separate discussion um, to go through the scenario section? Um, uh, I think as I was commenting on the doc, um, I realized some of my questions are actually for the original scenarios that we posted up. Um, and so I think going through the whole document uh, with the changes that have been suggested and uh, addressing questions there would be fruitful. Okay, I think that's a good idea. That'll give us time to really delve into it um, if we have a separate meeting. Who wants to schedule that? And the silence was deafening. 
sorry, what was that, Justin? I was going to say how much silence there was when there was an ask. Do you want to do you want to schedule that, Steve? Are you, is a... Wait, was that what happened? Oh. Justin just volunteered me. Yes. <laughs> that was why he was so quiet. <laughs> you were obviously about to volunteer, but you missed it. <laughs> I'm happy to, to set that up. In fact, what what I might suggest is we mo go back to doing ours. So here's the well, question: do we, want, do we want to have a do we want to have a slot, an optional slot for only for agendaed items that we have at the same time, so that it, we we can allow time, but not have it if we haven't got something agendaed in advance. Like so, say we have done like Wednesday, and if we haven't settled on something we need to talk about on the Monday half hour, then we don't have it. Something like that. So it's that a we, good idea. I, I guess I wanted to ask the larger group because we do have a good showing today. Where we we were going down this path of having working groups, um, we didn't really uh, we we kind of paused. There's lots of things that happened, so I, I don't care about the details of why. Um, do we want to get back to doing the working groups? Because I think it was you know, as you mentioned, you were going to start having some time for key management thoughts and. Um, I know, at least from the prototype, I, I worry, we're starting to get some bandwidth available. I, I worry a bit about that model because I feel like I feel like if we were all on the same page and we just needed to like break up into groups to do things and then make sure the pieces fit, I think that would would be an, a good model. But I worry that um, we're not like doing this is going to cause us to go off and do very different. Um, things and get more entrenched and make it harder for us to come together in the end. Um, yeah, part of the mechanism I think we came up to address that was the 30 minute agenda meeting was also like a forum to kind of share updates from the different working groups. So we'd have a weekly checking and make sure like, you know, we're, you're absolutely right. Like we're not going down and uh, checking and, 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 and going down paths that are sort of uh, um, bifurcating, right? Um, so the as long as I think we have uh, regular updates within the 30 minute agenda meeting from the different working groups, I think that should address the concern, right? Right. That was the model, yeah. It, and there's nothing stopping anybody from attending the breakout groups, right? It was just a matter of, um, Niaz, I'll just pick on you, like he was more interested in some of the key management stuff. So how things get signed and in that part of it, he'd probably divert to some others and then he'd be focusing on the key management with some other folks. And then we are kind of reporting up our status. But the assumption is there's overlap of people between the different meetings. So it's not like hey, all these breakout groups happen at the same time every week and you have to pick one. They'd be coordinated separately and then we move this to a half an hour. In fact, we move it to a half an hour. So the first half an hour could be a working group. Um, and I'm just I'm asking, did that model not work because the world turned upside down and we're now getting used to it or that model didn't work and we should come just make this an hour long conversation and set the agenda up front? I, at least for key management, um, uh, I can speak to that. Like I just did not go start the group and reach out and kind of get that thing started. Um, so that's something um, that I've started on and I'll follow up on Slack on that. Uh, I think that's definitely something uh, I can drive and see um, if we can't make contributions back to the group um, and share that. Um, uh, Justin, um, if we like, w does that does that make does that work for you? Like, if we have these working groups that are providing like updates regularly, does that address the concern you have? Uh, it might. It it really depends. Like, execution is is really the thing. And I know that, um, like myself or Marina or someone else will definitely need to. We'll have to have somebody in the different groups, and then we'll all have to sync internally to see what's going on. And so it, at least from our standpoint, feels, uh, and I, I shouldn't speak for others, but at least from my standpoint, it feels like um, we're, we're not necessarily gonna benefit that much from the breaking up into groups. Uh, but but I, you know, I'm very often, like this is an organizational thing that all depends on how we as people make it happen and so, you know, it's it's really impossible to predict with any accuracy how this will go. I'm I'm happy to try whatever if others are supportive. 
Yeah, I think this ad addresses a much larger concern for us than it does for uh, uh, for like, you know, Tough, for example, because uh, you're right, like Tough is going to have to take part in almost all the different working groups. Um, but from an organizational perspective for us, like we have different people that would weigh in on key management versus different people weigh in on sort of like the uh, uh, registry specifics. And so uh, uh, for us, it just makes sure uh, that we can get the right people for the right working groups and meetings. How about, why don't we do this uh, and make a suggestion? It sounds like, I know that there's on our side too, there's some people focused on key management that aren't, aren't they're, they're sensitive to their time. I don't wanna say they're not interested. They're definitely interested, but to respect for their time and commitments that they have, they would like to focus uniquely on the key management aspects. Um, but it sounds like it, certainly from the uh, the uh, NYU Tough and Toto Notary, I'm not sure what to call the group, um, the, that group's perspective, you're probably involved with all of them. So what if we did this, uh, Niaz, what if you set up some of your, the key management working group off to the side, um, you know, off to the side meeting, whatever time frame you want. I'll ask Amy to move this back to an hour. Uh, I'm, I'm Justin Cormack, I'm assuming you didn't already commit your first half an hour trying to overlap your time zones. Um, and then we'll leave 15 minutes, Niaz, for your team to kind of give an update. Um, either at the beginning, so we you know, time box it, and we'll just make sure we time box it at the end either way. How does that sound for folks? Well, we can do this. Um, we will probably end up explaining tough over and over and over again in these meetings, but if this seems like the best way forward, then we can do that. Do you, are you worried that the key management, that the key management is so intertwined that you'd have to attend that anyway, or is the key management just totally a tough thing and it doesn't really, I'm, my understanding is the key management has a bunch of complex scenarios that we hadn't previously thought of where like the, the offline keys was the example. Um, and having AWS and uh, Azure and others are invited from other clouds as well, but those are pretty good representations of really complex problems. Um, so just having those folks having a chance to break out on that because I think that they will tie up an hour of their own just trying to figure that part out. I mean we can we can do this it might be easier in some ways for us to come in and say here's something that we think meets all the needs in other areas um, can we talk about this from a standpoint of what scenarios you have from a key management standpoint that aren't captured and what situations are problematic because if we kind of go in and just say you know okay we're doing a v2 on this thing you already do everybody has their own ideas about like <clears throat> it's v1 plus these eight features i wanted and these three things removed i didn't want and then we're kind of battling from a different starting point and trying to get people on board in a more difficult way. Right, so Niaz, do you, I'm not sure how much you know about V1, but did my impression was even V1 didn't handle keys the way that are needed for some of whether the new or the newly uh, aware scenarios. Is that um, yeah. Well, go ahead. Yeah, I mean that that they were it didn't inherently. It was more on implementation detail. There was, there was no, okay. I mean, I think that, I mean, there was a, um, and there's are some PRs to make some changes in that thing that we've kind of mainly um, um, deferred to V2, but, but uh, you know, there wasn't anything inherently problematic. It was purely um, the registry implementation, practical implementations and, um, where and some things depending on um, where you know where where keys like were like I mean like the um, but yeah there's nothing there's nothing fundamentally problematic. Okay. So maybe I mean if the 
I mean, again, maybe, I mean, maybe we, maybe we need to start off with just making sure we've have all the requirements down from the people. You want so, from make sure time... that we, sorry, go ahead, Justin. Yeah. Just make sure that we, we are all clear what, if, if, everyone understands what the requirements actually are. Yeah, I think that's that's part of why I think the problem, I think I agreed with Cap, what Capo said in terms of like, if we had a set of requirements, like Tuff could come in and say how we address them, right? And the problem on the key management side of things is we haven't drafted that requirement yet. Um, so um, uh, I'll take the action of kind of like starting that group and getting the requirements together and getting that uploaded. Like if we have that documented by the, uh, end of June, um, I think then uh, we can look into sort of like seeing what parts of that tough addresses and what are the changes we'd need for that. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Uh, so I, Marina, I wrote what you volunteered. So it's not just recorded, it's written. Uh, and you can edit it if you want, uh, that you would put the initial PR for the key management scenarios and yeah, as obviously you review those, edit those, however you guys want to do and set up. Uh, so it, it, I guess maybe a show of hands does that work for the little reactions in the bottom there of, is everybody okay with a key management hour, whatever Niaz schedules offline, and then we'll say 15 minutes in next week's meeting or every subsequent week's meeting. I'll then uh, ask Amy to make our Monday meetings an hour long um, and we'll do the larger conversations for the tough notary conversations and then have 15 minutes for a recap of where Niaz has been on the key management. Are folks like a thumb up for that or where do the thumbs up show actually? I just did a <laughs> thumb up. I don't know where it shows. Oh, it's, wait, it's, it on, shows it's on your thumb. video. Okay. You I got a permanent <laughs> thumbs up in your forest. Okay. I got Eric and mine went away. It's, they're time based. I got one thumbs up. Nobody else wants. Oh, I, I, no one else has found the UI for <laughs> the, th the thumbs up. <laughs> okay, Marita's got it. It's like whack a not whack a mole. So oh, yes, there it is. <laughs> All right. There's no thumbs down, so I can't really do it as a. <laughs> it's, a, like it's, a, it's, a <laughs> it's a rigged vote. <laughs> All right, why don't we try that? Because um, I don't hear anybody say no either. So since the voting didn't seem to work very well. All right, we're at time. Um, okay, so uh, moving into an hour uh, going forward. Um, Niaz will try to get something scheduled over the next week and a uh, 15 minute recap in that meeting. And um, there we go. I, I was trying, I, like, I've been busy, like I'm sure everybody's been busy with their various planning and so forth or whatever it is people do for their day jobs. Um, I'm hopeful that we will start having some resources available to start you know, doing that notary V2 prototype thing, the NV, NV2 client, whatever that repo we created. Um, so we could start ex experimenting with everything from an experience to what something might look like. Um, so I won't have anything done by next week uh, from a certainly from a PR, but we'll try to get something kind of maybe written up from an experience point of view that we can start discussing and reviewing as well. So I'm hoping we'll start to see more progress as we've been circling around these scenarios. And thanks for the write up with the scenarios that actually get, at least having something to discuss. Uh, maybe you can uh, we can address those uh, comments. Um, obviously, in the doc directly, and in any discussions we want to have, we can do that next week. Anybody else for the one minute left? Yeah, sorry, just to clarify, meeting next week onwards is going to be 10, 10 uh, a.m. PT. Instead of starting at the half an hour uh, where we are this week, we'll start at the beginning of the hour for what everybody's time zone is. 10 a.m. Okay, Pacific great. time. Thanks. All right, Radu, I, the, you're, you're up late. I'd love to hear the stuff that you guys have been, you know, kind of spearheading in Signy um, and how we, that could accrue to this as well. I'm actually up early. I'm on Pacific time as well. Oh, okay. 
Uh, mm -hmm. We can definitely like, uh, yeah. check in next week or maybe the week after on the stuff we've been doing in Sign as well. Okay. Yeah, that would be, I've, I haven't caught up with you for ages, so it would be good to catch up. In fact, if you want to put an agenda now, I'll, I'll let me just put the template from the bottom to the top. If you want to sign up for uh, 15 minutes of the Signy update, that'd be great. I'm uh, not sure if you're going to be able to do it next week, but definitely in the next two weeks, I think we. Okay. And Jushank and I, we will uh, will present something. Okay. All right. Thanks, folks. Have a great week. Yeah. Bye, everyone.